Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. God. Hallelujah. Father, we come to your presence with thanksgiving and humble adorance. Even as we meditate, our, oh Lord, your word speak to us, O oh God. We open our hearts, we open our ears. Give us the manna for this day. Even as I speak, empower my word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Last week, I spoke to you about the language of prayer. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us to pray. That is why it is important for us as believers, we got to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We got to be baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit as an initial evidence that you and me are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. God gives us a language of prayer. That is called speaking in tongues. Amen. Speaking in an unknown tongue. That language that you do not know. Whether you speak in a language of human that you do not know. Or the language that human cannot understand. It is called the unknown tongue. In which we praise God. In which we communicate to God. I want to speak to you this morning. There are three practical ways Holy Spirit partners with us in prayer. Number one, the Holy Spirit stirs us to pray. The Holy Spirit is the one that stirs us to pray. This might surprise some of us, but prayer doesn't start with us. Knocking on the doorstep of God instead. Prayer starts with God knocking on our door. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. This is a scripture was written to the church in Laodicea. These are the seven you know, messages to the seven churches. And especially this scripture which talks about, especially to the church at, at Laodicea, the problem with the Laodicean church, it clearly says that they are lukewarm. Neither hot nor cold. They have, they live in a situation where they are not having a right relationship with God. They have lost their relationship with Jesus. This scripture, it is not just talking about evangelism. Though often this scripture has been addressing Jesus is knocking at the door. If you open, he will come and uh, 
fellowship with you is much more than that you got to understand here god knocks at the door not just for someone to receive him but to have fellowship with him fellowship with god comes through a time of prayer god spends time with us and we spend time with god when you are filled with the power of the lord when you and me are a spirit filled man and woman we will get to hear the voice of god the voice of god is time my son my daughter to have fellowship with me god is knocking at every one spiritual door when you open he comes in he wants to live with us he wants to fellowship with us the holy spirit stirs us to pray uh, to a prayer of fellowship where does jesus wants to live where is christ home it is our heart christ lives in us so a fellowshiping prayer has to do with someone spending time in the presence of god when the spirit of the lord stirs you up you hear the voice of god and you spend the time with god the holy spirit stirs us to fellowship everybody say fellowship fellowship with god in prayer not only that the holy spirit stirs us to a fighting prayer how many of you know that our greatest battle are not more obvious needs that we are facing every day in our life our physical needs financial needs or a relationship with friends and family our greatest battles in our day to day life is in a greater level it has to do with spiritual in the spiritual aspect when we are spiritually we have won the victory in our physical life in our financial life in our financial situation in our relationship with people it's going to be smoother many times we don't understand we constantly battle we try our best to maintain relationships we try we we try our best to maintain finances we try our best to maintain good health we want everything to f- function normally and often it doesn't function normally always we have challenges but the moment you and me are able to understand the winning is not physical it has to do in our spiritual life then you have won the victory somebody say amen in ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 12 the book of ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 12 it says very clearly to every one of us for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against 
the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. He talks about against the power of darkness, against the spiritual forces in the dark world. Apostle Paul very clearly says, when you understand that our battle is not physical, it's spiritual, when you and me are a spiritual man or a woman, Holy Spirit, He helps us to pray, to fight against the enemy spiritually. Amen? That is why the scripture Apostle Paul has to make it very clear. Come on, my friends, this is not to do with flesh and blood. Don't literally fight with your own friends and relatives to maintain relationship. It's becoming difficult. It has to be one on your knees. Spending time in prayer. When you have a relationship problem, when you have a financial problem, when you have challenges in your work, don't go against your company, your authorities. Don't form a union. Come and bend down on your knees in the presence of God. You do not know how to pray. As we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, the Holy Spirit will help you to pray. He will give you the words to pray in situation as such. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, 2 Corinthians Chapter number 10, verse number 4. It talks about the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. There are times when the Holy Spirit wants us to stare us, to stand in the gap for someone or something to battle in prayer, to fight, to wrestle for the will of God to be done. Not only does the Holy Spirit, He, he helps us to pray, He stirs us to pray. Come on, it's time for prayer. It's time for prayer. Hallelujah. How many of you get that urge by the Spirit of the Lord to pray? Somebody say hallelujah. Do you get the desire? Do you get the Holy Spirit waking you up in the middle of the night, early in the morning, or when you are suddenly you wanted to stop everything and you want to spend time in prayer? Listen to the voice of God. When you know that everything is going wrong around you, you got to understand it's not anything physical, it's something spiritually. The devil is working against me and I'm going to fight it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A louder hallelujah to Jesus. I told you last week, the devil is like a football coach. He will know his enemy's weakness. And he will hit the enemy in his weakness. When he is in a position not to face the enemy, that's the time the devil will attack you. 
The devil will never attack you when you are strong. The weakest moment of your life is when the devil is going to attack, for which we got to understand. The weapons that we fight are not going to be carnal weapons of the world, but it's a, it does have a divine power to demolish the strongholds of the enemy. Somebody say hallelujah. For which you need to be, be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and have a language of prayer to fight against the enemy. So that is why I say the Holy Spirit, He stirs us to pray. The Holy Spirit helps us, stirs us to pray, to fight against the enemy. The Holy Spirit stirs us to pray, to have a fellowship with God. Number two, the Holy Spirit does for us is he strengthens us to pray. Everybody says strengthen. The Holy Spirit strengthens each. He stirs. He strengthens us to pray. The scripture that we read first, Romans chapter 8, 26. And the scripture says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groan. That words cannot express. There are three ways the Holy Spirit strengthens us. Romans 8, verse number 11. The same chapter, verse number 11. It talks about, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you, also give life to your mortal bodies because of, this, because of His Spirit who lives in you. When Christ raised us, when we received Jesus as our personal Savior, formerly our spirit man, our spirit is dead in us because of our sin. The moment we receive Christ, our spirit being becomes alive. Everybody get it? As Christ raised from the dead, we are spiritually raised because of which in the scripture that we read, it says, if Christ can empower someone physically, he also does it spiritually. It simply means, it's not talking about all of us are going to die and that Christ is going to raise our mortal body. It is also talking about our spiritual being. You are not only just, okay, everyone are, who are da die in Christ are going to be raised by Christ. That is true. But first, there is a spiritual resurrection. Then the mortal bodily resurrection. You get my point? All those who are alive, if you have not received Christ, you are a dead person. The moment you receive Christ, your spirit, the spirit which is in you becomes alive. That is why 
it talks of apostle paul says everything is going to be new all things are going to be new everything is all things are passed away and there is everything there is a new beginning that happens when a man or a woman becomes a child of god the spirit raises someone the spirit strengthen so when the holy spirit energizes our spiritual life we have a new strength within us the spirit of the lord jesus was alive active even when he was tired do you remember many times after a whole day of ministry the lord jesus would go into the wilderness go into the mountain go into a solitary place and he will go for a time of prayer yes after a great time of ministry after a great time of miracles and signs and wonders jesus would go into a time of prayer how is it possible it's because the holy spirit strengthened him to pray amen for example just before the lord jesus was arrested they were in the mount olives they were praying in the garden of gethsemane as they were praying jesus said be awake pray the disciples will go into sleep he will come again come on pray they will go again to sleep how does jesus pray it? because his spirit was alive that's why jesus himself says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak amen even though your flesh is weak when your spirit is filled with the power of god you been strengthened to pray amen you can't get up you can't even do a small work but when your spirit is alive you get a new rejuvenated strength to spend hours and hours in the presence of god hallelujah loud a hallelujah please so it is the spirit holy spirit that strengthen us holy spirit strengthen us he is also enlightening us to see the differences see the scripture in romans it talks about a prayer that has been prayed in pain wordless groan you see this expression is like a child birth when a child was born the women go through pain of childbirth and uh, when they try to give birth to the child they groan and that groan is towards something hopeful that they are going to have a new relationship new child is going to be born 
there is a lot of expectation because there is going to be a joy after this pain through this groan. That is what in 8.26 it's talking about. You do not know what and how to pray in situations when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, says, read the scripture, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercede with, for us with groans that words cannot express. The, the pain, the, the, the groan would be mother makes before the childbirth. You do not know what is it all about, but it is all about hope an expectation. She knows it's going to end with a good ending. The same way, when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to give you words which you cannot express. The words you cannot say it. You do not know. You are just going blank. And this Holy Spirit is going to help us to pray in such situations. In other words, Holy Spirit is the one who stirs us to pray. He strengthens us to pray. And He is the one who is going to Engage us constantly. Engaging us. When he says, you do not know what to pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep praying in tongues. Keep praying in tongues. Hallelujah. That is why I am saying it is very important for us as a church to have a language of prayer. Everybody say language of prayer. The language of prayer is tongues. In your weaknesses, in your challenging moments, in your painful situations, when you lost your loved one, and if you ask, uh, if if someone asks you to pray, you you will you will bust out with pain and anger. But when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, God gives you language. You don't utter. Words of nonsense. The spirit groans with you. But you communicate to God whatever you want to say. It, without disturbing anybody. Without even devil knowing what is happening within you. That is why the language of prayer, that is the Speaking in tongues is very important. I want everyone in this congregation to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You got to have a language of prayer. Don't just say, I don't need this. You got to receive it. Hallelujah. 